Okay. Blue Smooth Cafe. 28th, 29th of October. Dan Patlansky, welcome to Holland. Man, so good to be here. Thank you for having me on your show, man. Well, we, we know your name and we know your music for quite a few years, but it's now the first time that we've seen you live playing in uh, Holland and that for somebody out of South Africa. Excuse me for saying, but it's not something I have thought come up, somebody from South Africa who played the blues like that. It, it, it is a rare thing. I think, you know, the rest of the world, I think, is a shock for them, you know, because, like, blues in Africa, how does that work, you know? Um, but there is a, it's a small blues scene in South Africa, but not, you know, not like the, the States or Europe, but, I mean, there is a blues scene there, and there's a lot of blues lovers in South Africa. I mean, the reason I got into blues was from my parents. I mean, they, they grew up listening to the blues in South Africa, Hendrix and... And, you know, the classic blues stuff and the blues rock stuff. So that's kind of how I got into it. And there's still this massive blues following in South Africa. Um, you know, so it, it, there is a market there. <laughs> there is blues in Africa, man, you know. Well, you, 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 you teach yourself um, play the music. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, as, as a young, young kid, I went to a few guitar lessons and stuff just to kind of get the basics down and you know, the names of the strings all that <laughs> type of stuff you know but um i pretty much i taught myself just from stealing s records from my my parents cd collection pretty much you know taking c rev Vaughan records bb king records albert king records and and absolutely loved what they did i grew up listening to that stuff and then i'd kind of listen to the records and kind of work out what that what these guys are doing the masters are doing and you know, try to try to play it, you know, and that that's pretty much how I taught myself how to play the blues. Yeah. For the record, you're 30 years old, yeah. so your your CD age. You you <laughs> didn't then bought any albums, the the, L, the LPs. It, it it was just before my. I remember them from when I was a, a kid, like my parents, you know. But I'm a. I think I was a teenager in the 90s, and that was like CD, 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 you know. <laughs> But it's weird because CDs are almost becoming like LPs these days, you know. Yeah. It's almost becoming a, a relic, a thing of the past, you know. But I, yeah, um, I'm getting into LPs now though because there's this whole revival of vinyl. And let me tell you something, you, you can't compare the sound of a vinyl to a CD or an MP3. I mean, a, a, a vinyl is incredible. It, it's... It's just incredible, and I'm I'm getting into it big time. You know what I mean? I know a, a blues or a rock player who said I don't release any CDs or any songs anymore on iTunes or any of that online video because the uh, MP3s is the quality is too low for me. I I want them given the best. That's vinyl. I exactly, vinyl is without a doubt. I mean, it's science. Uh, this is proven. I mean, there's a lot more information on a on a vinyl than there is on a CD and definitely more than an mp3 there's a, a massive soundscape it's it's huge you know? I think it, it's a lot easier to walk around with a Walkman than with an uh, uh, album player uh, <laughs> on, on, the, the, on, on the <laughs> exactly <laughs> so it's, it's you know, probably I, a sign of the times I, I think yeah the world we live in today I mean if you, like especially being in Africa and in South Africa you to get your music out there um, you have to kind of be available in all formats, you know. So if it's MP3 on iTunes and and whatever the whatever the, the platform is, yeah. CD, you know, LP, you know, that type of thing. I think you kind of got kind of got to get your music out on every kind of platform you possibly can. Yeah. Um, there are the, the albums you release. Do you yeah. release them on your own, or do you have a, a record company behind you? There, is it self-released? What is it? <laughs> The, the last three albums we've done, which is 20 Stones, Wooden Thoughts, and Dear Silence, there's a new one, that is all self-released. Um, I think also the music world's going in that direction too, because, you know, with a uh, YouTube, um, iTunes, all that, you can yourself, without any label, get your music out yeah. available to the rest of the world, right? Um, in the past, I was with the labels. Um, it wasn't very successful for me because I'm such a niche market artist, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not selling, you know, millions and millions of copies of albums, probably never will, so it made a lot more sense for me to do it myself, you know? To be in control of the content, you know, of what goes on the album. I don't want someone telling me, you should put this song on the album because it's going to be on the radio type of thing. Um, so that's the way I want to do it. I want to choose the songs on the album. I want the album to sound like I want it to sound, and it's the only way to go, I think, you know? 
Well, you listen to your albums uh, of your parents, that's absolutely, it had to be an uh, album from Stevie Ray Vaughan somewhere in that oh, collection, because the tone you hear to the first, it's, it's literally almost like, sounded mm -hmm. like uh, a <coughs> lot of Stevie Ray Vaughan songs. Did you research then, go back in the history to see what's the blues about, not only uh, with Stevie, but beyond that, to the old guys, for instance? With, without a doubt. I mean, what I did was I started you know, with modern blues guys, you know, like guys that like a young boy could kind of digest, you know, because I think if I went straight to Sunhouse or Robert Johnson as a kid, you'll go, what is this? You know what I mean? It's crazy. So I, I started listening to like guys, actually classic rock first. That's how I got into it. I got it into like through Pink Floyd, um, okay. Zeppelin, you know, that was when I was a kid. I was listening. I still love those guys. Um, and, you know, I realized that these guys, heroes, were blues guys. Yeah. So then I, I, I thought, okay, blues, let me check out the blues. And then I started checking out Eric Clapton, um, Steve Ray Vaughan, Hendrix, you know, and I really loved that. And, and, I, and Steve Ray Vaughan, as you said, I love Steve Ray Vaughan. I mean, <laughs> now, I, mean I love Hendrix, I love Elba King, BB King, Elba Kahn's, I love all these guys, but Steve Ray Vaughan is something really special for me. And then what I did was I went back to who, who were Steve Ray Vaughan's heroes? And Steve Ray Vaughan's heroes, as I researched that, and then I said, oh, Elba King. Yep. And Hendrix Lonnie and Mack. Lonnie Mack and all these guys. And I was like, great. And I, I got into those guys. And then I said, who are these guys' heroes? And then I kept on going back and back and back and back. And, you know, until you get to Sun House and, you know, all these guys. And um, so I am such a big blues fan. I mean, I, I, I listen to Lightning Hopkins, uh, Sun House, all the way to Joe Bonamassa. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? The whole spectrum, everything in between. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is that, uh, um, is that something you teach the kids? I know you um, have a guitar jamboree or guitar lessons in, yes. in South Africa where you go up with, with 100 people who want to learn guitar yeah. from you. Camping. Yes. People play and they are allowed to play with your band and yeah. you give them pointers how to. Yeah improve the game yeah, I mean, do you also tell no what the basis is of the blues without a doubt i mean that's pa that's part of what 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 those guitar weekends are all about you know what i mean is we get a lot of young guys coming in to learn to play guitar i mean also older guys too but you know always <laughs> always preaching the blues you know what i mean and pretty much all the stuff i cover in the workshop is is all blues i mean like i do a a section in the, the workshop which is called Licks of the Masters. So it's not my licks, it's, nice. it's like Alba King licks, BB King licks, um, Steve Ray Vaughan, you know, all my favorite guys. And I teach, teach a lot of the younger kids these licks. And for the most part, a lot of these young kids have never heard of these guys before, you know. And they, and they go, what, you've never heard of Alba Collins before, you know, or whoever. And they'll go back home, go get all the music, probably download all their music these days, you know and become Elba Collins fans or Elba King fans or Freddie King fans or whatever the case is, you know. So a big part of the Guitar Weekend is preaching what I love, which is the blues, yeah. Well, if you know so many about the blues and the old guys, how difficult is it then to release your own songs and not repeat what they did before, that still give it a 10 Bandatsky touch in every yeah. song you make? How difficult is that? That's a, that's a really good question. I mean, when, when I started out, I was, was doing traditional blues and and a lot of you know cover versions of you know my favorite artists and that's a great way to learn how to you know to play and, and get into the whole thing that, I mean that's the best way to learn but um, I think now that you know the stuff I'm writing it's all it's always will be a blues based thing it will always be based in the blues but um, you know you gotta you gotta try and get your own little touch on it which is very difficult because you know what I mean? The yeah. blues world's a small world and you, you know you, you don't want to sound too much like one guy you don't want to be a clone of someone you know I mean don't get me wrong I would give anything to be as good as Steve Ravon was man I mean he's he's you know or, or Hendrix or one of these guys but you know what I mean it's a, it's, it's all about uh, you know putting your own little touch on it and I think the longer you write for and the longer you in it the the more your own sound starts to kind of you know, melt into the whole sound of things, yeah. Could you describe the Dan Patletsky sound, how it is? But no, you did it love and different in CDs. You did some acoustic ones, whether you did it, uh, where the voice is more important than the guitar in some, in some uh, songs of you. And sometimes the music is absolutely on, on top. Yeah, even sure. 
the, the Lucas song, the 12 yeah, minute yeah. song, which yeah, it's sure. instrumental. Yeah. What is the Dan Bentlensky? The sound. The sound. Well, I think, um, I mean, I would like to describe my sound as, it's, it's, it's probably more of a blues rock type of sound, you know, um, I think in the whole scheme of things. Um, it's, it's raw. It's, it's, it's not, you know, I, I don't like overproduced kind of music. I like raw, I like mistakes in the music. Yeah. It's great, it's real, it's real, man, you know. Um, I, I love that and I love just the rawness of it. It's loud in your face, you know, yeah. You're not um, overproducing with, with foot pedals or sound effects or that kind of stuff? No, I think, you know, like live, I mean, my board is, is, is fairly simple. It's, um, you know, drives, overdrives, clean sound. That's pretty much the lot, man, you know what I mean? So, I mean... Um, I just love a raw sound. I love hearing albums and and seeing bands live where it's real. You know what I mean? It's it's these mistakes. It's real. You can I you can hear the breathing. You know, in the microphone. It's fantastic. You know, yeah. Um, now you're in Europe. You I, you've been last last year in, in Germany for a couple of songs. Uh, Holland is now added to the bill. Do you have a, a, a sort of laid out plan what you would like to reach in a couple of years? Yeah, I mean. You know, obviously, coming from South Africa, we've we, we mostly been touring out of South Africa. And, um, you know, it's, it's gone really well for us there. Very fortunate and blessed that it's, it's gone well there. But um, obviously now you come to Europe and you, you're starting at the bottom again, man. You know what I mean? That's, that's the reality. Then you started Blues Moves. That's the bottom. <laughs> uh, you know, there's just no other way to do it, you know. So the, the plan is, I mean, we love being in Europe. There's, there's fantastic audiences in Europe. Um, it's just another place to come and tour. And um, we, you know, we want to keep on coming back there and slowly but surely build up a, a following in, in Europe, you know, and, you know, just just grow the following a little bit bigger, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, get, get the music out there. You know? I think it's the way to go. And I heard you played a festival in in Denmark or in Scandinavia yeah. last weekend. In, in, in Norway, yeah. In Norway. That's so you, you started and then a year later you're headlining it. Yeeah, well there we go. I mean like, yeah, we, 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 we're actually going back to another festival this weekend in, in Denmark called the Horsens Blues Festival and we, uh, last year we, we played the small stage, you know, no one knew who we were. And um, so fortunate that we've come back this year and we, we're headlining this year, which is fantastic, man, and blessed to, <laughs> to be back, you know. Well, the good thing is, you did a show for Blue Smooth Radio. We recorded it and we put it out live for the audience to, to hear it and enjoy it. Thank you very much, Dan, for visiting our little, little humble place here in Grisby. <laughs> and we hope to see you many, many times back. Well, really, I really enjoyed it. Well, it's, it was an absolute honor and privilege to be on your show. And uh, it was a, so much fun. Great crew, great guys. Thank you for having me, man. It was fantastic. And we have some